Well, hello everyone, and welcome once again to Vlogatos. I'm Phil Ramsey, and uh, in this Bible Truth series, we are going through the Word, chapter and verse, uh, to build a ever-growing familiarity with God's Word. Um, most importantly, it is it is vital that we input the Word of God into our heart every day. Um, the Bible talks about it says, "Let it be." Uh, the hidden man of the heart, you know, uh, we have an inward man and an outward man, and if the, as Jesus said, if the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, and so, if the spirit, if you, if your heart is stronger than your flesh, then you will find yourself uh, pleasing God more often. If you, your outer man is stronger than your inner man, inner man, you will find your yourself overriding those good habits that God wants us to have, in favor of just doing whatever the flesh wants to do. And so putting the Word of God in, in your heart on a daily basis is extremely important towards strengthening the inner man because it is the food of the inner man, the food of the spirit of man. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, pick this back up. We are in Deuteronomy chapter 29. Moses is continuing his farewell address to the people of Israel. We're, we're starting to close in on the end of it. Um, and so let's just jump right in and, and continue along. So, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 1, says, These are the terms of the covenant the Lord commanded Moses to make with the Israelites while they were in the land of Moab, in addition to the covenant he had made with them at Mount Sinai. Moses summoned all the Israelites and said to them, You have seen with your own eyes everything the Lord did in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to his whole country, all the great tests of strength, the miraculous signs, and the amazing wonders. But to this day the Lord has not given you minds that understand, nor eyes that see, nor ears that hear. For forty years I led you through the wilderness, yet your clothes and sandals did not wear out. You ate no bread and drank no wine or other alcoholic drink, but he provided for you so you would know that he is the Lord your God. And uh, this reminds me of uh, when Jesus was in the boat with the disciples and, and um, he had already fed the four thousand, he had already fed the five thousand. And um, they, they're they in the boat. They had forgotten to bring bread. And Jesus starts talking to them uh, metaphorically. He, he said, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Um, in other words, beware of what motivates them. Don't, don't be like them in your, in your motivations. But they didn't understand. They thought he was talking about bread because he said the word yeast. And so they start arguing with each other. And he says... Uh, why are you arguing because you haven't brought any bread? And he doesn't, he doesn't explain that statement that, or that question to them. He just says, when you, uh, uh, he asked them how many baskets they took, uh, took up of leftovers when he fed the 4,000. And then they, they tell him, and then he asks how many baskets of leftovers that they picked up when he fed the 5,000. And then they tell him, and it's all this, all, I mean, all this bread that Jesus miraculously multiplied, and yet they're arguing because they have no bread in the boat. And the Bible says that the significance, and I like how, that's how it renders it in the NLT, the significance of what Jesus had done with the feeding the 4,000 and feeding the 5,000 was, um, was like it was like it was hidden from them. They, the significance of it had not dawned on them. They did not understand uh, that Jesus could have just multiplied bread in the boat right there. If he had done it before, he could do it again. <laughs> And the same, the same thing, you know, he, Moses, is not, God has, has not given you eyes that understand, nor eyes that see, nor ears that hear. But Jesus said, to those of you who are listening, the more, uh, the, 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 the greater effort you put into understanding what you have, the knowledge you have been given, more understanding will be given to you besides. And so, God doesn't want to have to do it for him. He wants, he, he, he's like, Moses says, I have for 40 years, God, I led you through the wilderness, and God... God supernaturally provided your your bread. He made it so your clothes didn't even wear out, your sandals didn't wear out, and yet you still are slow to understand um, who God is. And so it's like let's not be uh, let's not be stubborn in our understanding, but let's lean our heart into understanding because these things are understood with the heart and are understood with the mind. The Bible talks about that in the book of Corinthians, that these things are spiritually discerned. And so that's what, you know, the heart, the faith is of the heart, belief is of the heart, and spiritual understanding is of the heart, it's not of the mind. 
And so uh, Moses continues on here, verse 7. He says, When we came here, King Sihon of Heshbon and King Og of Bashan came out to fight against us, but we defeated them. We took their land and gave it to the tribes of Reuben and Gad and to the half-tribe of Manasseh as their grant of land. Therefore, obey the terms of this covenant so that you will prosper in everything you do. All of you, tribal leaders, elders, officers, all the men of Israel, are standing here today in the presence of the Lord your God. Your little ones and your wives are with you as well as the foreigners living among you who, will chop, who chop your wood and carry your water. You are standing here today to enter into the covenant of the Lord your God. The Lord is making this covenant, including the curses. By entering into the covenant today, he will establish you as his people and confirm that he is your God, just as he promised you and as he swore to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But you are not the only ones with whom I am making this covenant with its curses. I am making this covenant both with you who stand here today in the presence of the Lord our God, and also with the future generations who are not standing here today. You remember how we lived in the land of Egypt and how we traveled through the lands of enemy nations as we left. You have seen their detestable practices and their idols made of wood, stone, silver, and gold. I am making this covenant with you so that no one among you, no man, woman, clan, or tribe, will turn away from the Lord our God to worship these gods of other nations, and so that no root of... of so no root among you bears bitter and poisonous fruit. Those who hear the warnings of this curse should not congratulate themselves, thinking I am safe, even though I am following the desires of my own stubborn heart. And of course, that's not the wording that they're going to use, but what they're going to do is they want to persist in their own way, and they're going to say, well, I'm, I, I'm, you know, and, I, and I like how, um, I don't know if it's the NIV, but it's a different translation that renders this same verse. It says, uh, those who invoke a blessing on themselves and persist in their own way. So in other words, uh, yeah, I heard what God said, but I like this way better, I like my own way better, and, I'm, and I'll be fine. I'm just going to continue on and, and do my own thing, and everything will be fine. What are they doing? They're pronouncing a blessing on themselves, but it's a false blessing. He says, this would lead to utter ruin. Yeah. The Lord will never pardon such people. Instead, his anger and jealousy will burn against them. All the curses written in this book will come down on them, and the Lord will erase their names from under heaven, and the Lord will separate them from all the tribes of Israel to pour out on them all the curses of the covenant recorded in this book of instruction. Then the generations to come, both your own descendants and the foreigners who come from distant lands, will see the devastation of the land and the diseases the Lord inflicts on it. They will exclaim, The whole land is devastated by sulfur and salt. It is a wasteland with nothing planted and nothing growing, not even a blade of grass. It is like the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zebulun, which the Lord destroyed in his intense anger. And all the surrounding nations will ask, Why has the Lord done this to this land? Why was he so angry? And the answer will be, This happened because the people of the land abandoned the covenant that the Lord, the God of their ancestors, made with them when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. Instead, they turned away to serve and worship gods they had not known before, gods that were not from the Lord. That is why the Lord's anger has burned against this land, bringing down on it every curse recorded in this book. In great anger and fury, the Lord uprooted his people from their land and banished them to another land where they still live today. And so that's some more foretelling, and that's talking. So that will what, this conversation where people are asking this question is going to take place during those 70 years that the people are, are banished to Babylon. But like I said, that's not going to happen for, hundred, from, for hundreds of years from this point. And hundreds of years from this moment, when Moses is standing there talking to them, uh, they're in that from here until then, they're they're going to have, um, uh, they're going to live, they're going to conquer the land, they're going to have the time of the judges, then they're going to have the times of the kings. So hundreds of years, and then that will happen where they get banished to Babylon. And during that seventy years, people are going to say, "Why is this land so devastated?" And that's and the answer will be because they abandoned the Lord. So. See, God is, see, they're, they're thinking in terms of, okay, well, Moses has been talking for days now. Are we going to ever be able to cross over into the land? But Moses is telling them things that are going to happen hundreds of years in the future because God is concerned about those things. Verse 29, The Lord our God has secrets known to no one. We are not accountable for them, but we and our children are accountable forever for all the, that he has revealed to us so that we may obey all the terms of these instructions. Chapter 30. In the future, when you experience all these blessings and curses I have listed for you, and when you are living among the nations to which the Lord your God has exiled you, take to heart all these instructions. If at that time you and your children return to the Lord your God, 
And if you obey with all your heart and all your soul all the commands I have given you today, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes. He will have mercy on you and gather you back from all the nations where he has scattered you. Even though you are banished to the ends of the earth, the Lord your God will gather you from there and bring you back again. The Lord your God will return you to the land that belonged to your ancestors, and you will possess that land again. Then he will make you even more prosperous and numerous than your ancestors. The Lord your God will change your heart and the hearts of all your descendants so that you will love him with all your heart and soul, and so you may live. And the, mar the uh, translation note down there says, uh, circumcise your heart. So he's not saying he's going to force people's hearts to love him. What he's saying is, is that when they turn to him, there will be that shedding away of the sinful nature in the heart. Uh, because that's what circumcision is a symbol of. It's a symbol of the shedding away of a sinful nature. But um, it's only a, a physical circumcision is only a sign. And um, I'll let you explain that to your kids when they're old enough. Um, but it's only a physical sign of a, of, a, of a shedding away or a separating unto of being in covenant with God. But that was always just a sign or, or a foreshadow, if you will, of what God was going to do uh, later with Jesus, where he would actually uh, cut away the sinful nature of a person's heart who accepts Christ as their Lord. That way we don't have to be under the burden or the condemnation or the, the feelings of guilt of sin. But we are free from that. I mean, people can still live under that if they want to, but they don't have to. They can be free of that because Jesus has made a way for us to be free of that uh, guilty... Um, burden of, of sin, if you will, because we now have the uh, power to live free of sin. Um, but moving on down, the Lord your God will change your heart and, all the heart and the hearts of all your ancestors so that you will love him with all your heart and soul and so you may live. The Lord your God will inflict all these curses on your enemies and on those who hate and persecute you. Then you will again obey the Lord and keep all his commands that I am giving you today. The Lord your God will then make you successful in everything you do. He will give you many children and numerous livestock, and he will cause your fields to produce abundant harvests, for the Lord will again delight in being good to you as he was to your ancestors. The Lord your God will delight in you if you obey his voice and keep the commands and decrees written in this book of instruction, and if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. This command I am giving you today is not too difficult for you, and it is not beyond your reach. It is not kept in heaven so distant that you must ask who will go up to heaven and bring it down so we can hear it and obey. It is not kept beyond the sea so far away that you must ask who will cross the sea to bring it to us so we can hear it and obey. No, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart so that you can obey it. Now listen, today I am giving you a choice between life and death, between prosperity and disaster. For I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to keep his commands, decrees, and regulations by walking in his ways. If you do this, you will live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you and the land you are about to enter and occupy. But if your heart turns away and you refuse to listen, and if you are drawn away to serve and worship other gods, then I warn you now that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live a long good life in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to occupy. Today I have given you the choice between life and death between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying Him and committing yourself firmly to Him. This is the key to your life. And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live, along, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <clears throat> How am I on time? No one can. You were the one who said I had ten minutes last time when I almost had, when I all right. I'm just gonna keep reading. <laughs> Deuteronomy 31. When Moses had finished giving these instructions to all the people of Israel, he said, "I am now 120 years old, and I am no longer able to lead you. The Lord has told me you will not cross the Jordan River, but the Lord your God Himself will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy the nations living there." and you will take possession of their land. Joshua will lead you across the river, just as the Lord promised. Now imagine this. Moses has lived, he's 120. He was uh, 80 
when he came to get the people, and they've so this entire nation, uh, this entire there's an entire generation that has grown up, and Moses has always been with them. There's an entire group of people now that when Moses is about to die, he's the only leader they've ever known. Um, they know Joshua. Joshua has been with Moses the entire time, but Joshua has never been in charge before, and so that would be difficult. I mean, imagine you're you're 30 years old. Moses Moses is the only leader you've ever known, and he's about to die, and you're going to cross into this land, and you know you're going into warfare. It would not be an easy thing. So God makes makes it clear. I'm going to make. He he told Moses, I'll make Joshua into a great leader in the eyes of the people. Actually, maybe God said that Joshua. I'm not quite sure. But uh, here we go. Verse 4, the Lord will destroy the nations living in the land, just as he, had des he destroyed Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites. The Lord will hand over to you the people who live there, and you must deal with them as I have commanded you. So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, and do not panic before them, for the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Then Moses called for Joshua, and all Israel, as all Israel watched, he said to him, Be strong and courageous. For you will lead these people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors he would give them. You are the one who will divide it among them as their grants of land. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will never fail you, nor abandon you. So Moses wrote this entire body of instruction in a book and gave it to the priests who carried the Ark of the Lord's Covenant and to the elders of Israel. Then Moses gave them this command, At the end of every seventh year, the year of release during the festival of shelters, you must read this book of instruction to all the people of Israel when they assemble before the Lord your God at the place he chooses. Call them all together, men, women, children, and the foreigners living in your towns, so they may hear this book of instruction and learn to fear the Lord your God and carefully obey all the terms of these instructions. Do this so that your children who have not known these instructions will hear them and will learn to fear the Lord your God. Do this as long as you live in the land you are crossing the Jordan to occupy. Then the Lord said to Moses, The time has come for you to die. Call Joshua and present yourselves to the tabernacle, so that I may commission him there. And a commission, a commission is a commission. It is a uh, God is going God, since God Himself is going over ahead to subdue the nations, and the people are coming, and they're going to be the ones to actually drive out the nations. God is actually co is put is is co-laboring together with Joshua. He's saying, I'm going to co-mission Joshua. So Joshua is um, co-laboring together with God per, on a personal level. Very interesting. Just the same as we do uh, now with Jesus. So Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tabernacle. Verse 15. And the Lord appeared to them in a pillar of cloud that stood at the entrance to the sacred tent. The Lord said to Moses, You are about to die and join your ancestors. After you are gone... These people will begin to worship foreign gods, the gods of the land where they are going. They will abandon me and break my covenant that I have made with them. Then my anger will blaze forth against them. I will abandon them, hiding my face from them, and they will be devoured. Terrible trouble will come down on them, and on that day they will say, These disasters have come down on us because God is no longer among us. At that time I will hide my face from them on account of all the evil they commit by worshiping other gods. So, write down the words of this psalm and teach it to the people of Israel. Help them learn it, so it may serve as a witness for me against them. For I will bring them into the land I swore to give their ancestors, a land flowing with milk and honey. There they will become prosperous, eat all the food they want, and become fat. But they will begin to worship other gods. They will despise me, which means to think little of or to put place no value on, and break my covenant. And when great disasters come down on them, this song will stand as evidence against them, for it will never be forgotten by their descendants. I know the intentions of these people even now before they have entered the land I swore to give them. So that very day Moses wrote down the words of the song and taught it to the Israelites. Then the Lord commissioned Joshua, son of Nun, with these words, Be strong and courageous, for you must bring the people of Israel into the land I swore to give them. I will be with you. When Moses had finished writing this entire body of instruction in a book, he gave this command to the Levites who carried the Ark of the Lord's Covenant. Take this book of instruction and place it beside the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, so it may remain there as a witness against the people of Israel. For I know how rebellious and stubborn you are. Even now, while I am still alive and am here with you, you have rebelled against the Lord. How much more rebellious will you be after my death? Now, summon all the elders and officials of your tribe, so that I can speak to them directly and call heaven and earth to witness against them. 
I know that after my death you will become utterly corrupt and will turn away from the, the fr turn away wait turn from the way excuse me I have commanded you to follow. In the days to come disaster will come down on you, for you will do what is evil in the Lord's sight, making him very angry with your actions. Even though God knows of what they're going to do, He still allows them to walk through time and make their own choice, and that's because. God wants everyone to freely choose Him and not uh, not be programmed to choose Him. And so, in that is sort of uh, sort of the the tragedy side of that that there are people who will willingly choose to reject God, even though God is so is willing to be so good and generous to them. But uh, people have to have a choice. So let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the ability you have given us to choose. And help us to choose wisely, Lord God, in everything that we do. Help us to honor you and to look for you and acknowledge you and be grateful for the things you have done and the things you will do. And I thank you, Father God, and in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Bless you guys, and we will see you again.